Our second year project aimed to fully design the best turbine we could for testing in a wind tunnel. The objectives were to fully design, print and test a small wind turbine. The design had to fit inside a box. From this box we had to design a turbine to maximise our CP, the amount of generated power divided by the total power available passing through the swept area. The turbine had to be printed in one piece and the TSR had to be predicted as accurately as possible. Our design had two blades and a TSR of five. It had a lower twist enabling a larger turbine radius. The aerospace engineering industry is a constant playoff between structural and aerodynamic considerations. Typically, in a wind turbine, near the centre, structural considerations hold fort, whereas as you move out, aerodynamic considerations hold fort. What we decided to do was to introduce a mushroom shape here that meant that we could deflect the air from the structural region onto the lift producing parts of the blade, thus increasing our efficiency. Computational fluid dynamics was used to observe how our shield would affect the flow. Notice the lines running along the blade. The raked wingtip is when the tip of the blade has a greater sweep than the rest of the blade. In our case, it gets progressively larger. This increases the effective aspect ratio. Therefore, decreasing the strength of the trailing vortices and decreasing the lift-induced drag. We decided on the SG6043 aerofoil, optimized for small wind turbines and have enough breadth to maintain the structural integrity. Using MATLAB, the cord lengths and twists at each point of the blade were optimized for 12 meters per second using Schmidt's blade theory. The foldable design entailed a, a hinge that could be clipped and unclipped when necessary. As our turbine was to be tested in a wind tunnel, we decided to maximize the blockage effect to enable a greater power production by researching papers. The shield effectively reduced the swept area of the turbine, as well as the wind tunnel area, thus increasing sigma and hence maximizing the blockage effect. There were two parts to manufacture. The turbine blades made from ABS plastic and the hub made from aluminium metal. The turbine blades were manufactured by an additive process. The model was made using a vector file from Korea Parametric. Layers of ABS plastic are stacked to form the finished turbine. The orientation of the model affects the surface finish and the structural integrity of the design. Thus, when deciding the orientation of the print, a compromise had to be made between the two factors. Initially, our turbine was printed upright, giving an excellent finish, but this had a large impact on the structural integrity of the design that we had not accounted for in the design process. This led to the failure of our first model, which is discussed later in the video. We reprinted our model. In this second print, the turbine was orientated flat with an offset to the printing axis. This led to inaccuracies such as a fragmented trailing edge that required repairs and a raked wing tip that did not match the vector file. The surface was noticeably rougher in this printing orientation in comparison with our first print. It was sanded to be as smooth as possible to ensure laminar flow, reducing skin friction. The manufacture of the aluminium hub was done in four steps. First, the surface of the cylindrical block of aluminium was smoothed out using a lathe. Then, it was fitted onto a CNC milling machine, where the cylindrical block was cut to a hexagonal shape. After that, it was moved onto another lathe, in which the attached drill bit was used to drill a 16mm diameter hole. The 5mm square keyway was cut using a keyway brooch attached to a hydraulic press. CP value recorded for the initial blade was 0.7166 and the TSR value was 6.15, 1.15 above our predicted TSR value of 5. Unfortunately, our turbine failed. And after studying the parts and our design, there are two possible reasons for the failure. 
Firstly, it's important to mention that our CAD model had holes for bolts. However, these holes did not print. Under advice, we were told that glue would do the job. However, it appears it didn't. First of all, we can take a look at the mushroom. You can see here where the holes were meant to go for the bolts. The mushroom was such that there was a large moment arm acting upon it by the incoming flow. This, combined with the fact that the very high RPM, slightly higher than predicted, meant that the centrifugal force acting here was high. These two combination of factors meant that our mushroom separated. However, the other explanation is due to the printing orientation. The way it was printed was such that it was like this, as shown in this diagram. This gave us a beautiful surface finish. However, the strength, not so good. Unfortunately, at the joint, we believe it was between two of the layers. That meant that delamination could occur at much lower than calculated force. Maximum CPU value recorded for the second blade was 0.5326, but a poor TSR value of 6.45 was recorded. The closest TSR prediction was at 6 meters per second with a value of 5.52. Only 0.52 above our predicted TSR value of 5. When we removed the turbine from the tunnel, white streaks appeared on the blade due to debris in the tunnel, acting as a flow visualizer. Notice how the lines form along the blade as predicted by our CFD model. This transverse flow may be the reason our power production plateaued at higher velocities. As described earlier, we had to perform two tests. The results of our first test showed a CP of 0.69 at 6 meters per second, and at the same velocity for our second test, we had a CP of 0.56. So we started to look at what could have caused these differences. After reprinting the turbine in the correct orientation that replicated our CAD model, the new turbine was prepared. This turbine lasted well throughout the entire test. Very little tip deflection occurred, most probably because of our large root design. Why did the TSR of the two tests vary so much? To determine why our TSR was wrong, we can compare our first test with our second test. In the first test, our TSR prediction was more accurate, so what changed? The first test had a perfectly smooth finish, with perfect printed brake wing tips. The second print, which led to greater structural integrity, with layers aligned parallel to the centrifugal force compared to at first being aligned normal, had a rougher finish due to this orientation, and also resulted in misprinted brake wing tips, a characteristic feature that when manufactured correctly, reduces the induced drag. Thus, these discrepancies may have resulted in a different TSR prediction. Having said this, even our first test TSR was not what we had predicted. But why? Our final design differed from the model used in the Q-Blade simulation on a multitude of levels. For one, Q-Blade did not allow the customization of the nose cone to match the shape of the mushroom installed on the design. The mushroom deflected a large amount of air onto the lift producing parts of the blade which resulted in a greater rotational velocity, thus increasing the TSR above our prediction. Furthermore, the Q-Blade simulation did not allow us to account for the fact that blockage effects would occur in the wind tunnel configuration of dimensions 4 by 4.5 feet. Blockage effects would lead to streamlines being constrained parallel to the wind tunnel wall, leading to a reduced induced drag and a subsequent increase in lift coefficient. This is another factor that was considered when predicting the TSR, leading to an overestimate of this value. Why was our CP lower than expected? The skin friction acting upon the second model was greater than that on our first model due to the different surface finish. This explains why our CP was lower in the second test, as some of the energy from the flow was absorbed by the turbine in the form of thermal energy. We must also consider compressibility effects. At 3,500 rpm, the linear velocity at the tip approached 45% of the speed of sound. Thus, compressibility effects become significant and can no longer be neglected. The red wing tips were designed to delay shock formation at the tip. However, even with additional acceleration as the flow passed over the blade, no shocks would form, as the turbine was significantly below its critical Mach number. In conclusion, our blade met the design specification of fitting into the box with the prescribed dimensions. The CP value of the first blade exceeded the BETS limit, likely due to blockage effects of the wind tunnel. The second blade's CP value was 0.06 below the BETS limit. TSR prediction was poor, particularly for the second blade.